So here you can see the mess that I have made. I didn't bother making it fit really nice because I knew at some point I was going to replace the Raspberry Pi with my Ultimate 64. But it all does work, it makes sense. It boots up straight into the Commodore 64 Basic. It runs games and everything very nicely off of USB. And it's not permanent, which is nice as well, because a lot of mods, they are permanent. And I didn't need to use any keyboard adapters. So there's lots of commercial products out there. You can get them on eBay. You can get them all over the place that convert the keyboard to work USB or work with other devices. I didn't need that. I just used the GPIO. So I didn't even need this GPIO adapter really, it just makes it easier and more convenient. As you can see, it's an Adafruit one. You can get them cheap on eBay. So let's just go through all the bits and pieces. The best thing about this is it's run silent and that's because I've got this really posh fan. Um, you don't need to have a, a silent running fan. It's just nice, nice to have. So it's a no Noctua fan. Uh, so if I can get the listing and I'll drop that in the description and I'm just running that off the 5 volts so you don't really need that as you can see it just plugs into the 5 volts from the Raspberry Pi the rest is the GPIO plugging into the various bits of the keyboard and that's all on the wiki pages for the disk image. So you can get all of that information. Just make sure you match up what needs to go where. And just to be extra fancy, I rigged up the red LED, the power LED also. And again, you don't need to do that. It was just a nice thing to have. So if we trace the wires back, you can see that just goes into the five volts as well. Five volts and ground. And one extra thing I did was a USB extension cable so I could run the joystick out the side. With the GPIO off, you can actually see the rest of the Raspberry Pi. So you've got the SD card there, you've got USB power, and I'm using a USB power that actually has an on-off switch and that makes a big difference for usability. You can just get USB cables with power switches or you can get them with the power blocks with the integrated switch, it's up to you. HDMI, which if you look at the mess of cables I've got to make my 64C and my bread bin 64 work with a modern TV. HDMI is so much more convenient. Got the USB stick, USB extension cable. Got five volts power for the fan that just goes to five volts in uh, ground. You've got the red LED which also goes to 5 volts and ground. And then you just have to match up the GPIO pins using the table that's in the GitHub wiki. And this just makes it more easy to follow because it's got all the numbers of the Raspberry Pi GPIO right there. And then I just use jumper leads. And yeah, it could have been all soldered up, but uh, like I say, I wanted it to be nice and uh, replaceable. I didn't want it to be permanent, so nothing is really too permanently attached. 
Just to be careful, I did put in a resistor between the 5 volts and the GPIO. Just didn't want to blow the LED or draw too much current. Uh, the Raspberry Pi pins don't actually allow a lot of current to run through. So just to be careful, I put a resistor in there. Might not be necessary. Your mileage may vary. Here's how you connect up the keyboard to the GPIO. On the right here, we've got the keyboard connector pins and you just count them from the uh, one end. And uh, if you remember, the keyboard has a notch out so you can orient one side to the other. As you can see, it gives instructions for wiring up a joystick. I found using a USB a lot easier. This is where the magic really happens and you don't have to use a Commodore 64 keyboard. You can plug in a USB keyboard, plug in HDMI, plug in power, plug in your SD card and away you go. The BMC 64 stands for Bare Metal 64 and it's actually built on top of Vice which is really really good. It's a really good emulation, top notch, I've never found anything that didn't really work with it. And the advantage is, because it's bare metal, because it's not running on top of Raspbian or any other operating system, boots very quickly and has very low latency. It essentially becomes a Commodore 64. And because it's not running on a multitasking operating system, you can just power it off. You don't have to worry about corrupting your SD card. Now, I run my games off of an external USB stick, and you can plug in, I think, up to three USB sticks. But you don't have to worry as much about SD card corruption. It does, however, use a real Commodore 64 keyboard if you want to. And even, as I said, you can use Commodore 64 joysticks. But I quite happily used USB and used my Commodore 64 keyboard. I'm using a Pi 3 and a Pi 4 would probably be overkill and probably get very hot. I've got a Pi 3 and a fan and it won't, runs very well. But apparently it even runs on a Pi 0. All you have to do is either burn the image to an SD card and you can use any of the burners like Etcher or the Raspberry Pi official one or you can format a FAT3 card and put the files on there. However, you will need to get hold of the ROMs because of legal reasons they can't provide those and because of legal reasons I can't link to them. But they're out there very easy to find once you have those ROM files, you need to rename them to match what it shows here and put them in the C64 folder. And then any files that you've got, any games you've got, then you can also put those on your SD card. And it's compatible with floppy images, D64, tapes, and cartridges. The advantage of cartridges is there's no disk swapping and there's no need to uh, have any emulated loading. It just goes straight on like almost like a games console. Uh, tapes and D64 have to emulate those devices. So usually cartridges are better. D64 image, uh, fl uh, floppy images are the next best and then tapes are last. Once you have everything on your USB stick or on your SD card and everything's plugged in then you can boot up and then there's the F12 menu to go from there to navigate from there. So it's all controlled by this little menu here. You press F12 on a USB keyboard or Commodore key and F7 or the Commodore 64 keyboard. And then you can launch cartridges or you can launch uh, disks straight from this menu. And 
then from there you can swap the cartridge. I'll find uh, an old old game here. Here we go. Choplifter, that would be a good one. And then you can just switch to the other game. Now, my capture device here is a little bit out of sync with the audio, but it does sound absolutely wonderful. It, obviously, a purist would know the difference between an emulated SID chip and a real one, but... Now, if you attach a disc, it will know in the background that you've attached that disc, but it will not launch it straight away. As you can see, we've gone back to Choplifter here. You can also attach tapes. So that's down in the... Uh, where is it? Yeah, down here, tape. Attach a, attach a tape. Yeah, I'll attach uh, the barbarian here. Doesn't change what's running. Uh, you have to reboot. And you've got the soft reset, which goes back to the cartridge because the cartridge is still attached. Uh, you've got hard reset which again does the same thing, it's just like turning your Commodore 64 off and back on again. So what you have to do is detach the cartridge and in this menu here and then you'll boot into BASIC. And then from BASIC you can do load, quotes and dollar sign and put in comma 8 to say that it's the first drive. And then you can list what's on that disk. And if you remember, we added Turrican as the first disk. And for tape, you just have to do load and then quotes. And in the menu, you can control your tape. So uh, you can hit play on that. And it will emulate the tape. So it takes a long time, just like it used to do with the real tapes. Eventually it'll find the first thing on that tape, which should be coming up any minute now. Any minute now. Here we go, fan barbarian. I'll not play that. Let's load off of the disk. So so to load the first thing on disk it's load and then asterisk. And what you should do in most cases when loading a game is load asterisk comma eight comma one and that'll load it from the first drive into where it was saved in memory and then it should automatically load into the right place and then when it's loaded hit run there you have the crack intro and then eventually we get sorry Thank <laughs> you.